G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is, I'm not going to call it a 90 second video anymore because they're not making 90 seconds, let's call them short videos. It'll probably go for a couple of minutes, but at the end of it I'm going to whack on some of the uh, older footage that I've done on previous videos. So if you want to have a look at some of the, the mackerel fishing and a more in-depth conversation about how to catch mackerel, stick around to the end of the video and re-watch some of the old videos that I've already done. I've got a couple of questions on mackerel and that's what this video is about today. Before we get into it, if you get anything out of this video, make sure you give me the big thumbs up. It helps the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already for future videos. And uh, there's a Patreon link in the description. Use that if you want to support the channel. Okay, a couple of questions. The first one was from Chris. Uh, I won't mention the surname. Hi Wayne, what sort of knot are you attaching the slug with to the leader? The knots that I use in relation to the 40 gram Helco twisters, that's what I guess you're referring to. That knot is just a normal uni knot straight onto the line. You don't need to do anything special with them, they're so heavy that um, you don't need to worry about their action and they're, they're retrieved at such a fast rate that they just fly through the water fairly straight. They do wobble obviously and that's what flash is about but they more twist than them wobble so the knot is less important um, just a standard uni knot straight to the line or straight to the leader second question from a sax f great video but i was wondering where you get that map picture from that shows where all the beacons are i use navionics uh, navionics excellent application you just go to the app store type in navionics n-a-v-i-o-n-i-c-s that'll bring up the, uh, the app that I use. It There is a free element to the app. Uh, I don't use that one. I do pay for Navionics. Um, it's about, I think it's about $20 a year, but don't hold me to that. That's the sort of detail you get on Navionics. Now I just have it on my phone and I use it off my phone. Well, there's a couple of questions in relation to the Max. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. Don't forget the big thumbs up for me. Hit the subscribe button, Patreon in the link down below, and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care. Stick around if you want to have a look at the uh, footage from, or the more in-depth footage in relation to mackerel fishing that I've posted previously. Firstly, normally I live on the peninsula, so normally I put in either Clontarf or Scarborough. When I put in a Clontarf, it's because I want to go to the measured mile or the four beacons, or both. Uh, the measured mile from Clontarf is approximately 15 kilometers give or take a kilometre. So the first spot is the measured mile. We rock up at the measured mile. There's two beacons in the measured mile, obviously. That's how they measure the mile. Both beacons work. One beacon's a tripod, the other beacon's a straight beacon. Believe it or not, the straight beacon seems to do better than the tripod. Uh, the tripod attracts all sorts of fish. You'll get your snapper in uh, through the winter months and you'll get um, a shark there as well. A lot of good shark at the measured mile. And uh, most importantly, this time of year, you'll get your mackerel. Now, how do you catch a mackerel? Right, there's a million different ways to catch mackerel. How I catch mackerel, it's easy, it's clean, is on these slugs. This is a 40 gram Helco twister in gold. Um, that's a 40 gram Helco twister in silver. They're probably my go-to. Though they will do me 80% of the time. When the current is absolutely roaring, I will upsize to around that 55 gram. 55 gram, marginally bigger, and it goes real well. Now, depending on the bait fish they're feeding on, sometimes the Helco twisters won't work. Rarely, but sometimes. When they don't work, I try a few other things. These here, I don't know if you can see the bend in it there. You see that bend? They come straight. Now, that's just lead. When I buy them, I put a bend in them so that when they go through the water, there's a little bit more action, and that seems to work a lot better on the mackerel. So spend a few minutes, just put the smallest bend you can in there, just so that it gets a bit more action as it flies through the water. The water. That's all you need for mackerel. Mackerel will take slugs all day long. You can catch mackerel on bait, no problem at all doing that. Throw on your, um, your three gang hook. Sometimes they're feeding on the bottom, sometimes they're feeding on the top. If they're on the top, obviously float it. If they're on the bottom, we'll then send it down with a little bit of lead and get it down to the depth that they're at. You're about probably four or five meters further in. I reckon there might be a ledge or something there. If I throw up there and let it come back, I'll bet I'll hook up this time. Yes! 
my back! It's only a little one, I think. Oh no! Yeah! Oh yeah, he's not 50, he's 6. Okay, moving from uh, the measured mile across to the four beacons, approximately the same course, uh, 91 degree course from Clontarf to get to the measured mile, 98 degrees to get to the, the four beacons. Um, the four beacons, 23.4 kilometers I've got down on my map there, but it depends on which beacon you're going to. It's anywhere from 24 kilometers to about 26 kilometers to get to the four beacons. The four beacons work. You hear the four beacons mention a lot, and the reason you hear it mention a lot is because they work, they hold fish. So it's a great spot to, to give it a shot if you're uh, chasing mackerel. All the beacons work in the bay, okay? So every beacon will work. You'll pull up at any beacon on, the, on its given day and, and you'll catch mackerel there. The beacons that I'm talking about are the ones that I go to more frequently because they seem to be the ones that hold on a more regular basis. The measured mile, the four beacons, and on the next map you'll see that uh, when I'm fishing the northern part of the bay, it's M1, 2, 3, 4, and the lateral beacons that surround them. All these beacons work very well, and they're fairly close together, so you can move from one to the next to the next. When you're fishing, really important to be quiet. Try and find a beacon where there isn't anybody else fishing, if that's possible. And when you do find the beacon where there's no one fishing, don't roar up to the beacon. Get up further, go, go around the beacon, take a wide berth, get up current, and drift back so that you can cast fairly close to the beacon and drift silently across that beacon. This time of year on the inside of the bay, most of the mackerel you're going to get are either going to be school mackerel or spotties and they're not that big. School mackerel you'll get between 50 centimeters and 70 centimeters and spotties you'll get between 55 centimeters and 80 centimeters. So that, that, that's about an average size mackerel for the inside of the bay. So the line class you use, I use 20 pound line, so 20 pound braid and 20 pound leader. No wire. At the moment you put wire on the bay, you'll reduce the chances you catch a mackerel by about 80%. Don't use wire in the bay. The method. How do we catch mackerel? What you do is you find your, you find your drift, get your drift right, you throw up toward the beacon, you let your, your slug get all the way to the bottom. When you know that that's on the bottom, you give it a really quick hop, hops off the bottom, creates a bit of disturbance, and then you wind hard. Wind all the way back to the boat as fast as you can. When you get it back to the boat, you just repeat it. And you keep doing that over and over and over. That's not a bad fish, it probably should be a net. Bad net. Up against the boat. Okay. Okay. I'm a little bit hard attack in the net. That's big. Yeah. That is. He might even top Radley, you know. He'll get 70 though. We've just cast up to a lateral beacon. We're toward the end of Morton, the Cape. You can see a few beacons in the background. I'm fishing with Stig today and I'm fishing with Brad, the son. Brad's caught a nice one. His is around 70. Stig's just landed one about 70. I think we've got about five in the bin. Hooked up to one tuna, it's passing Pangaluma as we speak. And you're about probably four or five meters further in. I reckon it might be a ledge or something there. If I throw up there and let it come back, I'll bet I'll hook up this time. You watch. You on bread? Yes, I knew that. 
It's only small, but... Oh, got off. Stay back! It's only a little one, I think. Oh no! Yeah! Oh, he's got one swimming with it, Stig. Over your side, Brad. See it? Got him? Good work. That's alright. Let's quickly measure him and make sure he's 50. Oh yeah, he's not 50, he's 62. That is a good fish, Brad. Uh, net, Steg, where's this net? Where's right the net? behind you. Huh. Oh no, there's hooks in it. Back. Oh. Swim it head first. Hit. That's it. Let's drag it. That's a. I think that'll be a keeper. Um. Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This will be a tuna. He doesn't even know he's hooked yet. What do you reckon, Stigby Anchor? Yeah, nobody's gonna spill me. Oh, there it goes. 